Hey guys, in this video we're going to create a logo with Adobe Illustrator. If you don't have Adobe Illustrator in your computer, go to adobe.com and download a 7-day free trial version. Once you have downloaded and installed the program in your computer, open it up and then go to File, New. We are going to create a 500 pixel by 500 pixel document. Once you have specif specified the width and the height, hit Create. Now this is called an artboard. We're going to create our logo in this artboard. The first thing I want you to do is go to File and then Save It. Click Save As and then give it a name. I'm going to call it Logo. Make sure you're in a folder where you can easily find the file. I'm going to save it in my desktop. And then also make sure that the file type is selected as Adobe Illustrator.ai. Hit Save. OK, and now you're ready to make your logo. I want to make a few assumptions here. The first assumption is that you have already decided your brand colors, and the second one is that you know your brand fonts. We're going to need those once we start creating our logo. I'm also going to assume that you have downloaded and installed your brand fonts in your computer. All right. So now that that's out of the way, let's start creating our logo. The first thing I'm going to do is go up here on the left and hit the Type tool, click anywhere on the artboard, and start typing. Type your business name. For this tutorial, I'm going to type Film and Grains. This is the name of a magazine I used to run when I was still in college. It was a film photography magazine and it was a lot of fun. Anyway, so let's start changing this logo. I'm going to select all the text and then the first thing I want to do is change the font. On your right, under Properties, you can start changing your font. If you don't have Properties open, go to Window up top and then find properties and make sure that it is checked. Alright, so under properties, under character, you can now select your font. If you have downloaded and installed the font you want in your computer, it should show up in this list. If you don't see the font right away, you can start typing the name of the font and then it should show up. So for this tutorial, I'm going to use a font called EB Garamond. There you go. Alright, I'm also going to make it a little bigger by using this font size. And I am going to make it 60 or 70. 60 is good. Alright, now the logo has gone beyond the artboard. To fix that, I'm going to select the selection tool from the left and then drag it with my mouse and bring it towards the center. Now, it doesn't have to be perfectly centered. You can just kind of eyeball it because by the end of the tutorial you'll see that once you save the logo, it doesn't actually save all these white empty area in the artboard. It only saves the logo. So, you can have it over here, down here, it doesn't matter. I'm just keeping it towards the center because it's easy for me to work with. It doesn't have to be perfect. Alright, so now I have something that I can start working with. The first thing I want to do is change the color of the logo. So I'm going to go over here on the left and click, double click the fill box. And then if you know the hex code of your brand colors, you can start typing. I have a color, it's a dark gray color, and the hex code for that color is 4B4B4B. I'll type it here and then hit OK. As you can see, the color is now changed to a dark gray. Alright, so now it's time to make some more adjustments. You see that um, the letters film and grains, it looks pretty good, but I don't think I want the word and spelled out. So I'm going to go and select the type tool once again, get rid of the and word, and use an ampersand instead. Like so. Looks a bit more sophisticated, I think. Alright, looking good, and now I want to change even more things. 
So I want to see what it's going to look like with thicker fonts. So I can change the font style by coming here under properties. I can make it medium, semi bold, bold, extra bold, italic. Hmm. No, I think I like regular, so I'm going to keep regular. Now, these font styles depend on the font you have chosen. I have chosen EB Garamond, and thankfully, the EB Garamond font comes with a lot of different styles. So, if you choose a font that doesn't have a lot of different styles, then you're kind of um, forced to use whatever options you have. You could change some of the things like the weight and um, the slanting of the fonts, but these are beyond the scope of this tutorial, so I'm not going to talk about that. Alright, so the next thing I want to do is add some um, spacing between the adjacent letters. I can do that from here under the properties panel. This VA this controls the letter spacing or tracking. Click the down arrow and then you can easily change the spacing. So I think I want to give it a spacing of 25 or 50 maybe? Hmm. Maybe 10. 10 looks good. Actually I think I want something between 10 and 25. So as you can see there are no numbers between 10 and 25 but that's okay. We can always manually type it. I want to give it a spacing of 20, like so. Looking pretty good. And I want to make it a little bigger, but instead of playing with the font size, this time I want to just make it bigger with my mouse by dragging the corners of this type. Hold the Shift key, and then with your mouse, drag the corners or the edges, like so. The reason I want you to hold the shift key is because holding the shift key preserves the ratio or the proportions of the font. If you don't hold the shift key and then you start just playing with your mouse, you can mess it up like so. So holding the shift key maintains the proportions. Alright, so now that it's a little messed up, I want to go back and then I can go back by hitting Control Z or Command Z if you're using a Mac like so. So if you do something, you make a mistake and you want to backtrack and go back to the previous step, just hit Control Z or Command Z. That should do the work. Alright, it's looking good and I want to try a couple of other things. So over here, if you click the three dots, it opens up more options and you have a bunch of other options here. For example, you can change the vertical scale to make the font longer or shorter, like so. You can also play with the horizontal scale and then make the font wider or um, thinner. But I think I like the default settings, so I'm going to keep the 100%. That's the default. But I do want to try playing with um, converting all the letters to all caps. So instead of typing out the logo once again, I can just click this button, this TT button, and it converts everything to all caps. If you hit it again, it goes back and becomes regular again. So I actually like all caps, so I think I'm going to play with that for now. Alright, but now the logo has gone beyond the artboard, so I'm going to hold the shift key and then drag with my mouse to bring it back within the artboard, like so. Alright, I think I'm really liking the all caps, so I'm going to stick with all caps. But I do want to give it some more spacing now, so I will go back and then this VA, I'll change that to maybe something like 75. Looking good. Alright, I'm really liking it now. I think I'm ready to save that because I think this is looking pretty sophisticated and professional and pretty cool. So I am gonna go with this. Alright, so the next step is to convert this type based logo into a vector shape. Alright, before I do that, I just want to point out that 
be very careful because once you convert it to vector you can't really change the type I mean you could go back like control Z and undo your vectorization so that's okay it's not that big of a problem but ideally you want to make sure that everything is exactly how you want them to look before you make your logo into a vector all right I like how it is right now and I am ready to make it into a vector to do that make sure that it is selected and then go up here object and then click expand hit OK and there you go now it's a vector shape the reason vectorizing is so important is because once you convert your type into a vector it retains the quality so you can make it super small you can make it super big it doesn't matter so some of you may have wondered that okay 500 pixel by 500 pixel artboard is kinda small see the reason it doesn't matter is because once you have converted to a vector you can take and print this logo in a huge poster and it will still retain the quality alright so there are a couple of other things that you can do once your logo is vectorized for example you can control the individual letters because they are now individual shapes and make something funky for example if you click it and then under properties you will see a button that says ungroup because by default all these shapes are grouped together so if you hit ungroup and then click anywhere in the artboard it basically makes it so that you can now start changing these individual shapes for example let's say that I want to play with this ampersand so I'm going to click the ampersand and as you can see it selects only the ampersand now you can um, drag the corners to make it bigger like so you can change it you can move it up or down left or right with your mouse or the arrow keys and you can even rotate them like so it looks pretty funky right I kinda like it this is I eyeballed it but it's starting to look pretty neat so yeah you can if you wanted to change the individual shapes and then make something a little more funky but for my purposes I don't want it to, to be too funky so I'm gonna go back with control Z and then like so because I want it to be simple simple but sophisticated and professional alright I think I'm ready to save my logo to save that go to file go to export export as and the first file type we're gonna save is SVG SVG is a code based file type it makes the file size really small but it does not take away from the quality of your logo so they're perfect for using on websites once you have selected SVG from the drop-down hit export and that's it hit OK alright that's good now go back to file export export as and this time we're gonna save a transparent back PNG alright so choose PNG from the drop-down hit export this will open up the PNG options and make sure that under preview you have the logo as you want it to look like so by default your artboard should have cropped and then your logo should be constrained by the logo's edges and not the artboard's edges make sure that the background color is set to transparent and then hit OK and that's it you have your logo now